All righty. Well, we want to welcome you to the uh, monthly meeting of cultural affairs and tourism uh, here in Brockton. And we do have a skeleton crew tonight. Several of our regulars have called in uh, that they're either booked solid with something else or sick. I know there's uh, one couple that uh, normally would be here, but again, um, uh, John is particularly dealing with uh, recovering from, uh, I think, a short hospital stay and someone else, their husband was in the hospital. And, and I really want to avoid hospitals. I've, I've done my time. Matter of fact, I actually had a doctor's appointment this morning. And uh, my first time to that doctor. And they essentially said to me at the end of it, there's nothing we can do for you that's going to help you. So don't bother coming back. <laughs> Like, welcome to healthcare in America now. Um, so anyway, be that as it may, um, we're thinking of those that uh, aren't able to make it here. And we do have truly a short agenda tonight. Normally, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, but one of the things we wanted to address was the expo that we had. I think we counted uh, 15 vendors. So that was very exciting for our first try. Uh, we filled up all but two tables. And uh, so we were prepared and we had some come in at the last minute. And uh, everybody was really upbeat that day. And as has been my experience over the years in going to large conventions, I remember years ago going to Las Vegas to Comdex, which was the big computer convention, and they had 125,000 people attend. And they would often offer lectures and that. And, and it's like the genealogy uh, conferences I go to. I don't know if I ever attend a lecture. I'm working the floor with the vendors. And so there was a lot of great networking uh, accomplished that day. Uh, we learned about a few new... Uh, new um, entities that are here in Brockton, and we were able to promote uh, them. We'll still be able to promote them at different events throughout the year. And uh, I know at least one of the groups um, has a success story because I think it's schools, School on Wheels. Uh, they were here, and uh, they've recruited my wife to be a tutor. So they had progress for the day. And, uh, but others too, uh, were a lot was accomplished that day. And just getting to know some of the people involved in the different organizations. I know the Garden Club was here, the Brockton Garden Club. And it was nice to be able to, I started off the meeting for them by handing them a big bag of seeds that we aren't going to use in our community garden or in our home garden. So uh, I don't know where they'll go, but they'll go to some place here in Brockton where they'll have a chance to produce some fruit and, uh, and veggies. Although I could not convince my wife to give away the kale seeds because the ladies of the church like kale and I stand alone on this one. So <sighs> we're, we have those. I'm not sure if they're planted yet. Our house looks like a nursery where um, one, one office and the living room are just covered with seedlings going and some went out into the greenhouse today and then uh, we actually planted the peas in the community garden the other day because they they can go right into the ground uh, to start with so um, there was again uh, just another example of different groups working together um, we've got the, the Brockton Library was here and the Brockton Library Foundation were both here and uh, so uh, in really the announcements is uh, if somebody has some spare time on their hands tomorrow setting up for the book sale, but Saturday from 10 to 4 at the Brockton Public Library, the main branch, uh, they'll be on the main level, the first, uh, like the ground level uh, in one of the big rooms there. Uh, there'll be the, well, I was going to call it an annual book sale, but we want to have one like every two or three months. <laughs> Uh, to try and generate additional funds. The last one was held at BCA, and that was a success. Uh, 
actually is the most amount of money that has come in for any one of the book sales that they've done. So that was pretty impressive. And so we're looking to uh, do um, to do more uh, this time because uh, we've advertised. We've used the tool that the Brockton Library Foundation uh, purchased to do e-blasts. And so we've sent out all kinds of emails reminding people of it. And I heard today that somebody called Ann yesterday saying, I've got some books to donate and I'm coming to the sale on Saturday. So I don't know if that's the only person that's going to come from the e-blast, but that's at least one more than we knew was coming before. So um, we, we, you have to learn to measure things exactly as they are. And it's like on our church, if one person comes and visits on Easter Sunday, we're going to be super excited. If 15 people come and visit, we're going to be just as excited as one. And that's the same thing with the, the Library Foundation. Uh, it was also good to get spend a little bit of time with Paul Engel, the head librarian, and give him a tour of our facilities here and um, the research library that we have here. And uh, I can say we added a huge collection on Saturday, um, seven microfilm filing cabinets full of the New York Times from the very first edition in 1851 up through, I think, August of 2009, we have available now in microfilm. And uh, so it's just an, another addition to um, the collection here for our genealogical library. Someday, I guess, we'll have BCA come in and do a, a real thing once we clean it all up and uh, hide all the extra bookcases that are there. Um, so when we look back at the expo, we say it was a success. Already looking forward to doing it next March. Now, maybe we'll still be able to do it in the basement here, or maybe we'll have to find a bigger place to do it. But uh, we need to get the word out about events so that people can show up to them. If nobody shows up, then you would kind of wonder. You know, there were, I don't know if anybody was trying to count how many people came in. Um, I know I would love to have seen more people from Brockton come through it, but uh, many of us got to do PSAs, which was really nice, you know. So those are airing somewhere on some channel or YouTube, and, uh, you know, so people can learn about what we're doing. And, uh, again, you know, we cannot say enough thanks to BCA for all that they do. And um, they've had a little bit of a changeover at the head, so we're looking forward to... Uh, working with Scott and uh, trying to keep things going for the different groups. And um, so next March, we'll find a good date and we'll have Expo number two and uh, continue it on. Uh, <clears throat> the, I'm trying to think what was else was the announcements that are coming up. Uh, well, I think they're all gone. <laughs> but again, I call the Expo a success, you know, getting to know those other organizations. A couple of them I did not know before, um, but it's always, it's always a good thing when we learn about what's going on in Brockton. Now, um, let's see. I told you this could be a short meeting, announcements. There's not a lot of groups here to do announcements tonight. Uh, but I've already announced about the book sale coming up Saturday at the Maine Public Library. Um, somebody has a book signing coming up. <laughs> That's the public card. He has a book signing uh, over at Heritage House. What day is that on? It's the day just before Mother's Day. But it's a, I don't have to do it on top. Oh, is it? Oh, May 7th. That's an important day because that's my birthday. <laughs> I was born on a Saturday about 8 o'clock in the evening, and my dad had to run down to the gift shop at the hospital to get a Mother's Day card for my mom. And uh, they kept it open long enough for him to be able to get in there and get a Mother's Day card for her. And uh, so uh, that's a... A good time. 
Um, so that's over at the Heritage House. And you say you have another one? On the 18th of May in Randolph. Oh, 18th of May? Yes. Okay, in Randolph. <laughs> okay. Oh, at the Randolph Library. All right. That's good. Any exposure an author can get is a good thing. It is. I, I've, I've co-authored several books over the years, mostly about computers. Did some education books as low as grade two up to high, high school materials. But uh, the computer books, it's like you always wonder, does somebody ever read the thing? And then you go to a lecture, a seminar, and uh, somebody asks the question, a valid question. So what books do you recommend that we have in our library you know, of IT nerds? And the lecturer holds up this one book, and it's like, yep, I've got that one in my library. And then the second book that she selected, I go like, I've got that one in my library too because I was a co-author on it. And um, so it was... Yeah, you know, it was kind of neat to know that a national training organization was actually using a book that I helped write. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's the kind of recognition you want. The kind of recognition I didn't want was my partner in crime from the college was there, uh, puts his hand up, and he says, oh, I got the author of that book right here, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing, you know. Uh, I, felt, I felt very sorry for the lady that was given the lecture because every time, you know, she was asked a question afterwards, she then go, "Is that isn't that right, Richard?" And so I made at the the break time, I walked up and I said to her, "You're coming to lunch with us, and my boss is paying." <laughs> and I took her to I, we went to Legal Seafood at the at the Pru, and uh, made him pick up the check because he should never have embarrassed either one of us that way. But anyway, it is a great honor when you, you've written something and somebody comes and to get it, to buy it. and Yeah, it's just, you know, because every book is a labor of love. It's not just a labor. <laughs> it's a labor of love. Uh, anyway, so Pastor Paul, he has several uh, events coming up, and... Um, Let's see. Uh, what else do we have coming up? That's to your knowledge, is there any live entertainment coming? Not to my knowledge. Uh, I know the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the the other side of the city um, seem to be regularly having like quartets and ensembles, but I do not. Symphony type. Symphony type music, yes, yes. Yeah. but uh, I do not know what their schedule is. It's, it's not something that's made it to me in an announcement because I would p have it on, you know, happening in Brockton dot com. You know, I I can only put there what people send me, because um, I, I guess there's not enough hours in the day to chase down everyone. But I do know that they have done a number of um, events there uh, already this year. Um, we did our Irish concert here, but we'll probably look to do another one in the fall um, to just just for the sheer enjoyment of it. The other question I have for you is, they've been around for three years now. Uh, the roller derby? Yes. When are they going to compete? Do not know. They are still, they're still under COVID regulations of, to some degree. Um, they've practiced here all winter. Uh, which is kind of neat when you can say you're the home of the Brockton Bruisers in the winter or inclement weather. Uh, but right now they're able to, they've been able to get into, I think it's the Davis School Gym on Wednesday evenings. And so they have a lot more room to work with there. Um, while they were here, it was, it was really practicing and drills. Um, they did do one game among themselves at, um, earlier in the year, but it's really, they're in the developmental stage where they need to get more ladies involved and uh, young ladies. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting someone to shake their head, no. <laughs> They've been around for a long time, I just haven't seen them in competition. Yes, it's again, a lot of the stuff is, you know, 
so many people are still living under COVID regulations and that's, or perceived regulations. But also too, it's they need to grow their numbers. The last couple of times that they were here, they had several first timers. So that was exciting, you know, that there were extra people here. And, uh, you know, so it's one of those things where, you know, they'll utilize some of the events that will happen this summer and, you know, be there to promote what they're trying to do. And, you know, hopefully someday they'll be able to get enough for a full size team and be able to uh, have others uh, join in and have a good old fashioned competition. You know, I got to watch it because I had security cameras downstairs. So I got to watch it and it's like, and there was no hitting. And it's like, oh, that's not what I remember when I was a kid, you know, but I saw them practicing all their skills that you need. And uh, as they, you know, you know, you got to learn how to fall. You know, we, we <laughs> don't get hit by a car. Been there, done that. You know, um, at any age, you don't want to do that. And uh, it's just, but, you know, I played hockey. And one of the things you had to learn to do was to fall. And uh, I hated those drills at 6 in the morning. But they made it so that you knew how to deal with issues when you were in the game. You know, and, uh, you know, stops and starts, I hated that. It just it wasn't, it wasn't something I wanted to do. But uh, learning how to fall. Um, fortunately, I was usually one of the biggest guys on my teams. And so I made other people fall. And that was my job, to be the enforcer. And uh, I, I did it pretty well. And uh, I, I've, well, let's see. Everyone has their voice. Has their voice. We're meeting on Saturday afternoon. Yes, that is Saturday afternoon. Uh, I believe at 2 o'clock at in one of the other rooms at the main at the at the main Brockton Library, um, they have several poets that are, and again, they can be found on our website, happeninginbrockton.com. Um, Philip is one of the very first to always send out, so that we have it up there the longest. Um, I know Dr. Bruce has an event that same day, the 16th, uh, for the. Um, Cancer nonprofit, cancer supporter nonprofit. So he has an event that day um, as well. So it's a, Saturday's a busy day, and uh, and of course we're all getting ready for Easter. And uh, but uh, let's see, I'm trying to think who else has got. Some... On the thirtieth, on the thirtieth, they support your reading um, also with Philip. On the thirtieth. On the thirtieth, okay. Oh, of May. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think if he's... I don't think he sent me that one yet. Okay. Yeah, so we have the April 16th one, um, and then the, I know he's going to do one, one a month. And uh, happeninginbrockton.com is uh, the easiest way for somebody to find out what's going on here in Brockton. There's going to be some other events going on, um, some different organizations you know, that are not with us, but they have things going on in Brockton this summer. There's and a play at East Middle School called No More Body Bags on um, May 14th, and they've been practicing it this year. Ah. Is that about koala? Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> I got an email about some, a, a, a musical that's going on, but I won't even, you know, I'm sorry. My pastor uh, conscience won't let me announce it, so... <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we're starting to see some some things opening up, and you know it, it, it that's exciting. And uh, you know, I meet people all the time. They're just like, I'm tired of staying home. I I want to go see something. And uh, you know, you may somebody may catch me going to a play just because it's something different. You know, hopefully it's one I like. Or no, it's like the po it's like the poetry. I I don't know if Philip would ever count on me being at the, you know, at the poetry one. I mean, my wife loves poetry, but to me, poetry is roses are red, violets are blue. You know, that's as deep as I can get with it. And <laughs> so, uh, but we have ha 
we have some great poets right here in Brockton, you know, and as we have great musicians and, you know, um, and other groups that, you know, put on things. And it's, it's just exciting for me to see that we're finally getting over the hump and starting to do things. I mean, unfortunately, I believe that we, we, we've had some casualties when I think of some of the restaurants that have closed and places that you would like to go. I'm so thankful for those that have stuck it out. Honestly, don't know how they did it, but I'm glad they did. And, uh, but now we're starting to see some gatherings um, where people are able to get together. And, you know, we as a church, you know, we, we closed for that first 10 weeks because nobody knew what was going on. But after that, we, we've been open in person, on video as well. And audio, well, the audio we've been on since 2003, we were one of the first adopters of podcast. And uh, so now we just, you know, the, something broke here. And so we had from January till about two weeks ago, we didn't have any videos to go up on YouTube. Now, part of it was I was sick and then I was in the hospital and then something went wonky with the computer and uh, the wonkiness has been removed. <laughs> That's a tech term. So um, we're back on the, we've got the YouTube thing going. And, uh, and what's interesting is, is when we do things like this, we, uh, we broaden our horizons. You know, we're here in Brockton, Mass., but yet we have influence in India and in different states. You know, nobody, nobody, I don't know of anybody that's going to drive here from Maryland to come to church but they'll watch our service online yes. and, you know, and they'll watch, you know, they use the, they see a lot of what's going on in Brockton because BCA puts it up on YouTube. So you don't have to be from Brockton to see it. You can see it from anywhere in the world. And, and we want to showcase, you know, we need to showcase Brockton and it starts really at the grassroots level. And I think we're the seedlings right now, <laughs> but, uh, we'll have to mow the grass later on. But uh, again, we're just so thankful for all that's been able to be accomplished here and we want to see more go forward. And now that we're almost out of the COVID, I say almost because they keep coming up with new strains and uh, <clears throat> most of them are no da more dangerous than the common cold, and, which can be bad for some people. You know, I've been told, like, don't catch a cold. Don't dare get it, and don't you dare get a cough. I did. I got both. I ended up in the hospital. But uh, I'll teach you. To, I'll teach me to go to my cardiologist for a six month checkup. You're going to the ER. You're not going home. I'm getting a bad habit of that happening with my doctors. You know, but. Uh, <clears throat> such as it is, I'm grateful that they're there and I'm grateful that they're insistent. <laughs> and, and, and like I say, and I'm grateful for every group that has been represented here over, this is the 13th month of us gathering together. We did skip December for a meeting, but we actually had two in March because we had a regular meeting and we had the expo. And... Uh, our communication uh, list is growing by leaps and bounds. So uh, I can't believe this. We're actually done in 30 minutes. Wow. Huh? Of course, you know, I only had a handful. We had, we had to remember what everybody else's announcements were. And uh, But again, always check things out on the website, you know, happeninginbrockton.com. And uh, it will, you will find all the things that are happening. Um, is, that, is that what the question is? Happening in Brockton? Happeninginbrockton.com. <laughs> yep. The, um, a, a, as soon as an event is over, I go on and edit it and, and delete, delete it off. And hopefully, you know, somebody has sent me something new that I can put on there at the same time. But I try to keep up with it um, on a daily basis. And... Uh, you know, so if, you know, if, if something gets canceled, somebody needs to let me know. I take it off there. That's only happened once. Um, but uh, it's just, 
you know, we, we want a place where people can find out what's going on here. I know there's a what's, I think it's what's happening in Brockton on F Facebook. That's not us. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody else that's concerned, to, you know, to let people know what's going on here in Brockton. And uh, there's a lot going on right now, and there will be a lot more in the very near future. So thank you for coming. Thank you for Brockton Community Access being here and recording this uh, monologue tonight. Uh, for the most part, and uh, we look forward to next month's meeting where most all of our regulars will be back or won't be sick. Um, and so we'll be meeting here the second Thursday of the month of May. And uh, so thank you for coming, and thank you, BCA.